You know what this is? It's called a skeet thrower. It's for hunters who only like birds that fly in a straight line. <laughs> this would have been real handy when I had my paper route. <laughs> but that's just my creative side coming out. Bernice hates that. But hey, I got an even better use for this thing. Every man's dream, an automatic beverage dispenser. <laughs> See, when I'm out on the lake fishing, the drinks will get warm in the sun. But if I keep the cooler cool in the shade, I gotta bring the boat back in every time I need a drink. So in an eight hour day, that's only gonna leave about like 12 minutes for fishing. But this rig keeps them cold. And then when I feel a thirst coming on, I just pull on the trigger line and the unit will deliver the drinks right to me. When Mohammed can't come to the Mountain Dew, the Mountain Dew has to come to Mohammed. See, I cut a hole in the bottom of the cooler and lay the cans on their side so they'll roll out one at a time. And then I got this bungee cord to reset the mechanism after each toss. <laughs> and my trigger line serves a dual purpose. I ran it through an eyelet on the front of the thrower, so as I move around the lake, the unit stays aimed right at me. <laughs> You're probably as impressed with me as I am. <laughs> Man, I'm getting thirsty. Oh, waiter. This week. You know, they have those companies that put on seminars for people who like to spend all their time figuring out how come they never get anything done. <laughs> well, apparently they're sending a bunch of them up here to Possum Lodge. <laughs> I mean, I always think that self help companies are a waste of money, but it's fine if they're going to waste it here. <laughs> oh, Uncle yeah, Randall, yeah, yeah. this is so exciting! <laughs> Excited. It's so exciting because these are very successful people we're coming up here, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, these are movers and shakers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> movers and shakers, losers and fakers, Harold, you know? <laughs> Who cares as long as the check clears? Huh? Huh? Boy, these are the top CEOs in the country. Yeah. I'll finally have someone to talk to. <laughs> well, that'll be good for all of us, Harold. <laughs> hey, you know, if these are high rollers, maybe I should get in a couple of kegs and a bunch of cigars and set a room full of uh, poker tables, hmm? No, 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 they're here to explore nature. Well, those things are my nature. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm just thinking maybe I should spend a fair whack of time with these guys. And these guys are winners, Harold. Around here, that's an endangered species. <laughs> that's very true. Yeah. yeah. Red. Yeah. They're here. The CEOs, the movers and shakers? Yeah, I, I guess. Okay, well, well, go tell them I'm going to crack open the bar and we'll go down and have a skinny dip, okay? Uh, <laughs> maybe you better tell them. Receives uh, this coupon for a free visit to Crazy Lou's Super Competitive Discount Savatorium. <laughs> where the motto is if you can find a cheaper price anywhere else, we'll go over there and buy it before you get a chance to. <laughs> and then we'll sell it to you for our price. <laughs> okay, uh, cover your uh, ears, uh, Winston. Okay, Mr. Green, uh, you have 30 seconds to get Winston Rothschild to say this word second. Second. All right, all right. Buddy. And go. Okay, uh, Winston, what do you think of when I say first? Rothschild sewage and septic sucking services. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, try this. Uh, number two. Rothschild oh, no. sewage and septic sucking services. Uh, okay, okay. What do you call the place between first and third? The pitcher's mound? <laughs> okay. Remember uh, when Dalton was having a few problems when he first married Anne Marie and he came to you and he said he was having a certain kind of thoughts? Suicidal. <laughs> okay, no. If you go to a lodge meeting and somebody puts a motion on the floor, what's the next step? I clean it up. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. 
Okay, okay, no. You know, your cousin is your first cousin, right? But what's his son called? Oh, Uncle Helen. <laughs> we're, we're almost out of time, Mr. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's go another way. There are 60 of these in every minute. Septic overflows. <laughs> That's why I'm so busy. I'm thinking about getting a second truck. There we go. <laughs> Welcome to Talking Animals. Special treat today is local animal control officer Ed Fred is bringing us another interesting animal, the cardboard box. <laughs> Completely wrong as always, Red. No, I was just being funny. <laughs> wrong again. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, this box contains a very rare jumping frog from the Amazon jungle. Oh. These frogs are excellent jumpers. Oh. <laughs> You're a pretty good jumper yourself, eh? <laughs> I think he's just hungry. I didn't want to overfeed him because there's holes in the bottom of the box, and I just had my truck cleaned. Yeah. Don't ever transport a wild turkey in the front seat of your vehicle. Especially around Thanksgiving. No, I can see that. So what does a jumping frog eat? Oh, flies. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I always keep a few on me. Oh, and now you got something to feed them to. <laughs> Rather than desperately trying to be funny, why don't you hold the box for me? Oh, yeah, all right, sure. All right. Oh, oh careful, careful. Oh, oh. Okay, they love flies. Yeah, yeah. To this frog, each fly is like a filet mignon. Oh, yeah? I never had a filet mignon, but I love frog legs. Whoa! Oh, 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 oh. Watch out! Okay, easy, easy. Put him down, put him okay, down. Okay, put him okay, it's okay. Okay, 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 he's settling down. All right. Okay, he'll yeah. be okay for yeah. a... A few moments. Okay. Boy, he's got some strong leg muscles. That oh, guy, eh? yeah. Oh. And when they see a live fly, they yeah. go really nuts. Oh, wow. That's why I only use dead ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, 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 they're not all dead. Uh -oh. Yeah. Oh, okay, uh, I'll distract the frog. You shoot the fly away. All right. It's a frog. Hello, oh, come over. Look over here. Yeah, come on, he's back. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, got him, got him. Okay, here, hold him. Yeah. Don't let go. Okay. I, don't, I don't think he's in there, Ed. Huh? Well, where is he? <laughs> what? Shh, 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 shh. I think he's in your pants. He said they love flies. <laughs> when you're young, you can't sit still, because there's a great big world out there just waiting for you. When you get older, you can't sit still either, but that's just the hemorrhoids. <laughs> the point is, men don't like to sit still for too long. Like when you're driving in the car and all of a sudden you get a Charlie horse and your leg flies up, knocks your coffee over, spills into the ignition wires, you got yourself a car fire. <laughs> I wish I had a nickel for every time that's happened. <laughs> so when you're on a trip, wouldn't it be great to be able to stand up once in a while? The answer is yes. Real men do lots of things standing up. <laughs> What we need to do is to maximize the leg room and then convert some of that leg room into headroom. That's not gonna do it. I took the back seat out and moved the driver's seat away from the steering wheel. The downside is you now have less room for passengers. The upside is you now have less room for passengers. <laughs> That gives us enough floor space for standing up. But we'll move the seat forward so that we can start in the sitting position and then just slide her back when the sciatica starts acting up. <laughs> okay, we have a couple of choices here. You could put blocks on the pedals like your dad did with your tricycle. <laughs> or you can hire an ex-basketball player as your chauffeur. I'm gonna go with plan A. Now we need to check the headroom. You want the roof to be at least six inches above your head, especially if you have potholes. <laughs> I'm going to need another two and a half feet of headroom, but here again, I only need the extra height when I'm standing up. So what I need is some type of retractable hydraulic lift. Where am I going to find something like that? No, oh, wait. I just cut the roof off and mount it on those trunk lifts. With a brain this big, you need extra headroom. Great. 
part of a saw. Maybe I should have done this with a convertible. But we're good to go. I got my roof mounted on my trunk raising mechanism, so now when I get tired of sitting, I just slap her into cruise control, slide the seat back, and press the trunk release button, which is my way of raising the roof. Then I just stand up until the feeling comes back into my legs. Now, I was going to wear sunglasses to keep the bugs out of my eyes, but I put them in the trunk and it doesn't open anymore. Other than that, we're ready for a test drive. So remember, women don't find you handsome. They should at least find you handy. I'm looking forward to a long trip, but there was a time when I wouldn't stand for it. you guys about a milestone a lot of us have reached you know milestones are like kidney stones you just got to close your eyes bite your lip and let them pass <laughs> I'm guessing that by now you're getting a little long in the tooth and chances are it's not even your tooth <laughs> at this time in our lives like it or not we have to start looking dapper yeah we have to wear nice clothes and we have to keep them clean and pressed you no longer look good in a baggy sweatshirt that's because you are a baggy sweatshirt. <laughs> Those folds and flaps are you. <laughs> so now your clothes got to always be neat and completely wrinkle free. Beauticians say that your full length, fully clothed appearance should never contain more than 150 wrinkles. <laughs> your forehead covers that. <laughs> so get a hat to cover your forehead. <laughs> the sad truth is that old guys have to dress better than young guys. Just accept it. I suggest you wear a shirt and tie at breakfast, a three-piece suit when you're washing the car, and a tuxedo when you go to church. <laughs> Look at the bright side. Every day, you're getting a little closer to your own funeral. It'll save the kids a bundle if you're already dressed for it. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. If you need to get your septic bed moved, call me soon. If you need to get your septic bed to stop moving, call me now. <laughs> Rothschild Sewage and Septic Sucking Services. Yeah, but I don't know why they can't just leave things the way they are. Well, around here, the way things are doesn't mean that's the way they should be. Everybody tries to change me. Take that as a hint. <laughs> so we got these women senior managers up here, and it's driving me crazy. I mean, I spend all day restocking the fridge with bottled water and then going around making sure all the toilet seats are down. <laughs> I think there's a connection. Well, they're very friendly, and yeah. they're polite. Yeah. You know, they made a huge difference to the whole lodge. They cleaned up all the car parts off the front porch. <laughs> I didn't know we had a view of the lake. Well, they're not supposed to be here to wreck my world, Harold. I mean, this is a retreat. Yes, it is. And you should retreat. <laughs> no, I just need to regroup, that's all. I'm going to get a chance to do that this afternoon, because Dalton has rented a bus. He's going to take the ladies on a tour of the area. Oh, that'd be very nice. Well, I think it'll work out all right. Can I help you? I think it's Dalton. Yes, it is. I cleaned out my car and I found my comb. Boy, these, these women are changing you, aren't they? Yes, they are. Wow. You know, and I kind of like it. Uh -huh. I enjoy having them around. It makes me feel almost... <laughs> you don't seem yourself at all. Yes, I know. Yes, Anne Marie noticed that too. She gave me kind of a funny look at breakfast this morning, so I'm gonna save my energy all day just in case. <laughs> we'll see you boys later, huh? Now, where are you taking the ladies, Mr. Humphrey? Uh, to my store. Yeah, I've got a free gift and a corsage for anyone who spends over $200. <laughs> You know, some of the ladies say I look a little bit like Jack Nicholson. Boy, they're really getting to you, aren't they? 
Red, they make me want to be a better salesman. <laughs> Bill had decided to spend a day out on the lake in a little, uh, little homemade boat that he'd made. And uh, he tied her up uh, not only to the dock, but apparently to his, uh, to his own lake. <laughs> There you go. All right, and uh, it's a little little picnic area we have down near the edge of the the edge of the water there. And uh, Bill was taking all of it. Bill doesn't like to make a lot of trips, so he likes to try to take everything everything at once. I mean, that's the plan. It doesn't all make it uh, to the destination. Bill hasn't grasped the concept of gravity just yet. So by the time he gets down to the dock, there's not too much left. But at least he can go fishing, you know. So he jumps into the boat, and he's going to get ready to paddle off, and he notices the, or the, oars, the oars are gone, Bill. No oars. Doesn't quite know what happened there, but don't worry about it. Don't worry. Just go get a paddle. Go on, get a paddle. All right? Go Away you go. You know, sometimes you can be looking for something, and you can't see it, and it jumps right up and bites you. Okay, there's your paddle. Now he goes back. Now at least you can get going, get your, get your day of fishing in. And he sits down. Now he's got no seat in the boat. But he's starting to think, what the heck is going on here? Things are like disappearing like crazy. Well, you got a lawn chair, go get the lawn chair. You know, you got to adapt in life. You got to go with the flow. Oh, oh, oh. All right, and that'll be fine. You can sit on that, you got your paddle, you should be fine. So he, so he jumps in the boat and... Now we got no floor in the boat. So now he goes back, gets the cooler. And now when he comes down to the dock, he sees that the sides and the transom are missing from the boat. And he, he's so stuck with that, he doesn't notice the whole dock is also missing. Something very, very strange going on. So he just gotta just, Bill, just, just, just sit down, take a deep breath, and regroup. Uh, I'm not sure that's a complete chair, Bill. Boy, oh boy, this is a... Uh, Starting to feel a bit like the Twilight Zone uh, for Bill, and uh, he takes the cooler up. And that, that's not a not a complete table either. And now he's starting to really panic. Something weird is going on. There's the barrel. What happened there? And uh, the picket fence is gone, and this is just very odd. So he decides just to go home and just maybe have a, have a little sleep. And maybe this was all a dream of some kind. And he gets there, and he sees that his, his mailbox is okay, but there's no post. And this is. This is very odd. And then he, he pulls up in front of the house, and, and uh, the house is okay, but uh, the dog house, it, it, it doesn't look quite right. Uh, I don't think that's a complete dog house. You know, now this was just a complete misunderstanding, as it turns out. Um, in the old days now, I know they used to call this vandalism, but uh, since about 97, I believe it's called recycling. Could someone please explain to me why a bag of snacks has to be welded shut? <laughs> During the playoffs, a man could starve to death. Luckily, I have an easy solution. Remember in science class, there was a thing called a bell jar? Me neither. <laughs> but apparently, they would put a ringing bell inside a glass jar and then suck all the air out of the space, kind of like what Harold does during a conversation. <laughs> and once the air was out of there, you had a vacuum. You couldn't hear the bell anymore. No such luck with Harold. But I figure we can use that same technology to open our bag of snacks. Because inside here, we got air pressure. And as soon as it goes into a vacuum, hey, something's got to give. You don't need a bell jar either, just something airtight. And I don't mean an alibi. I'm thinking a diving helmet. And you set the whole unit down on a rubber car floor mat, smooth side up so you get a good seal. Okay. Then you hook up a heavy-duty industrial vacuum cleaner to the breather pipe, and that snack bag will burst open like the seam on Moose Thompson's Sunday pants. <laughs> well, you know, having those women CEOs up here hasn't been too bad. Giving us a break from each other, anyhow. <laughs> they're nice, they're bright, and they smell good. I am so proud of you, Uncle Red. That always scares me, Harold. <laughs> hey, I spend 95% of my time with men, so this has been a new experience for me. Yeah, but things seem to go a little better once you started talking to them. 
Yeah, I suppose, you know, when you, when you don't talk to men, they appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, but see, then you don't know what they're thinking, you know, and they can't help you with your problems. I know, it's great. <laughs> Well, I'm still very proud of you. You know the way you interacted with those women head honchos like that? You know, because I know you're not comfortable around people who have, like, an education or, or teeth. Don't or... ruin it here. <laughs> well, the point is, you know, men and women, pretty much we're all the same. Well, that's certainly true in your case. <laughs> oh, meeting time. Yeah, you go ahead here. I'll tell the ladies I'll be right down. Oh, they'll be so excited. <laughs> So if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting. And I've been thinking, hey, I'm the CEO of the lodge. You're the CEO of our home. What say we have a high level meeting? Maybe consider a merger. <laughs> the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. Bow your heads for the uh, woman's prayer. <laughs> I am a woman. Hear me roar. I'm in charge. Get over it.